I'm heading more than 400 kilometers northeast to the rainforest town of Sepilok, on the east coast of Sabah. This is the last stop of my journey, and I've come to meet a man who's dedicated his life to protect one of Malaysia's least known natural treasures. Wong is an animal biologist and scientist who's thrown himself into the task of rescuing and rehabilitating Malaysia's sun bears. I've enlisted myself into his crew and we'll spend the rest of the day finding out what it means to be a sun bear volunteer. Wow, this is it, huh? Yep, this is it, Jason. So before going, there are some rules over here, obviously. When we go in there, you have to keep quiet and don't try to get close to any animals. I may put my hand to let the bear smell me, but that's me only. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Okay. Okay, so ready? It's a bear house. Wong's bear house looks tough, but for the rescued bears, it's more like a hotel. They are well fed and rehabilitated here before being released back into the jungle. The focus is to build up the bear's strength, keep them healthy, and teach them the skills they need to function in the forest. How many uh, bears do you have off Yeah, there? Right now we have 23 bears. Where do they come from? They come from uh, pets. You know, the the wildlife, Sabah Wildlife Department confiscated those animals from private owners. So why, why, why do people keep them as pets? The baby sun bears. Imagine the smallest bear species in the world and the baby are very, very cute. Mm -hmm. you know? And then with the habitat destructions going on, with the logging activity going on, with the poachings and hunting activities going on. There's actually no shortage for, for bear cubs uh, being sold in the market. The sun bear cubs, purchased as pets, quickly grow into fearsome adults and are often abandoned by their owners or confined to cages for the rest of their lives. Moved by their plight, Wong set up this sanctuary in 2008 to provide a refuge for these outcasts. Since then, Caring for the bears has taken over his life. Right now we're taking care of uh, 23 bears. Now, I mean, not seems a lot, but the truth is that there's a lot of work. There's a lot of work. Uh, I studied this animal for so long. If I, I think that you know, if I don't do anything, nobody will. So, what the heck? Let's do it. Great attitude. Don't try to. The day starts at 7:30 a.m. every day for Wong and his volunteers. Uh, they prepare four meals a day for the bears, hey girl. making sure they get the right mix of foods well while being careful to stay out of claw's reach. Rains of fruits. Rain fruit. Tell me, boy, you want your fruits? Yep. Easy, boy. Om came here in 2005 as a baby as well. I pretty much see him, see him grow big and grow strong. He's a prime male. He didn't take those claws, he shredded the husk. He's biting the shell of the coconut with his teeth. He just, he, he got, finally got inside with the water, the coconut water. Look at him, he's drinking. <laughs> Boy, he's not wasting anything, is he, Wong? <laughs> Look, he's licking all the ones that, the, the coconut water that's landing on his chest. <laughs> Precious little coconut water. Although the sun bears have few natural predators, in the wild they still have to compete with other large mammals for their food. Even though Om is protected within his enclosure, he still has to fend off challenges from a family of cheeky macaques. While mature males like Alm must be kept separated from other bears to prevent fights, the female sun bears are much more social. They are able to leave the bear house and enter a special jungle enclosure. Here they can enjoy a setting similar to that of their natural habitat. This is a rainforest habitat with lots of big trees, uh -huh. multiple layers of canopy, and very dense undergrowth vegetation. Okay. This is where sun bear live in the forest. Okay. And then in these facilities, there's a bear coming in now. Oh, hey, girl. Okay, chuck some fruits. Yeah. Chuck it high, chuck it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. 
<laughs> I spent six years in the forest studying wild sun bears. I see bears like that, gleams of bears uh -huh. for a few seconds and then they disappear. They disappear. Uh -huh. Here, you can see bears like this all day long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's not more than two, uh, 50 people right now have seen sun bears walking in the forest like this. Right. You guys are really, really lucky. Oh, there they come. Oh, Here are my girls. two more. Yeah, three more. Hey, three. Lawa, my girl. Sun bears, chest mark, uh, unique. Come uh. in all different kind of shapes. Oh. And there's no two individuals share the similar Same pattern. Uh. This is Lawa. Lawa. The one on the left is Jira. While many of the older rescued oh, bears will have to live out their lives in the sanctuary, on, let's go, go. the younger cubs still have a chance of being returned to the wild. Come. Hello. Wow, she's so... How old is she? Nine or eight months old. Suddenly, too many legs. Yeah. So in the wild... Oh, cute. Cub follow mother like what she is following yeah. me right oh. now. Yeah. Mary is the baby of Wong's bear family. Stolen from her mother at a young age, she missed out on the nurturing that all animals need to feel safe and discover their environment. There you go. All she's known so far is the inside of a cage. So Wong has started taking her on walks in the forest to try and teach her the skills she will one day need to return to the jungle. This is fantastic. Like, uh taking my daughter and walks through the forest <laughs> and the exploration on the on Mary's face and, and how she you know sees everything and comes alive it's, uh, it's incredible good girl <laughs> she want your finger okay just go ahead and give her another finger one finger at a time one finger at a time oh aren't you a sweetheart wow who gets to do this, huh? Yeah, if you know about the whole story, actually this kind of situation is really heartbreaking. Yeah. A mother probably been killed. You yeah. don't want to get a cup like that. So Wong, if it wasn't for your sanctuary here, protecting the sun bears, what would be the fate of Mary? Well, she would be keeping in small cages. For yeah, the whole life. life. Pretty, yeah. Yeah. That's it. I've seen so many cage bear now. Uh, definitely all this hard work paid off by seeing them, you know, like have the chances to free from a cage and start digging like this and climbing the trees. All feels really good. There's no word that I can describe how good it is, but it's just that I know by my heart, inside my heart, that this is worth doing. This is worth my life, to, you know, just to spend on this and uh, help with them. special journey this this trip this time around and um, very different from my last time here the diversity of plants and animals within this country is just amazing it has an effect on me as a traveler and I think it's worth protecting it's, it's worth conserving and it's worth restoring the people that were involved with the, the conservation efforts and the people involved with trying to hold on and retain their cultural beliefs and I give them a great deal of respect. Like, there's a lot of people that are standing their ground and, and doing the best that they can to like, take care of their home here in this land of Malaysia.